Today we are starting to frame the rooftop deck I was talking about, and I'm going to explain to you what our goals are, what our trials are, what our tribulations are, and what we plan to accomplish, and how we're going to get around that. And then, you know, later we'll see how it actually happens. But for now, come out here. Let's 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 see. Okay, so here's what we're dealing with. We have about six inches. Normally, you know that a deck would be framed with a minimum of a two by eight joist. Now, in this case, we don't even have the seven and a quarter inches we would need to use a two by eight joist. We have six inches exactly. So we need to frame with something less. We're probably going to end up using two by sixes and ripping them to size. Our EPA is three quarters of an inch thick, the flooring, and we want it to land, we want it to be flush with the lip here. So we're not going to be able to use a two by eight. So that's the first thing we have to get out of the way and just stop. So what we're going to do is use two by sixes, but we have to account for a slope. Now, the slope is not traditional. The spine here is level all the way across, and it slopes like this towards the scuppers that you can see where the water and debris will drain out. So what we have to do is figure out how we're going to make our deck exactly level with the door and completely level and underneath we allow airflow and water flow that you'll never see to make sure that this brand new roof and our brand new deck both live as long as possible together. Also, you'll find in most construction when you're not the only builder on site, you're working on top of other people's um, oversights. So for example, this rooftop terrace is not even close to square. How are we going to make our deck look perfectly square, be perfectly level when nothing is level or square here? That's going to be the fun and that's what we're going to show you how to do. What we're going to do first things first, we're going to measure at our front door. We want to find out what our total is from here to here so we can do our measurement for our rim joist that we're going to put against the house. One seventy-six. So I'm going to actually take the zip level to evaluate where my slopes are going on the roof. It's kind of obvious, but just to be on the safe side, what we're going to do is we're going to cut our rim joist kind of like straight on the crop, uh, straight on top, and almost like you know, cut a V out of it. So it almost looks like a bow tie, so it could sit on the ridge on both sides, and then it'll establish the thickness of every joist that we need to run from from rim to rim uh, to make sure that we. Do leave a little bit of a gap. I want to do like three quarters of an inch at the most, maybe an inch, underneath every single joist to make sure that any debris that fall through the cracks can also drain to the scuppers. So we don't have any maintenance issues in the future, and we don't have to worry about buildup of gunk and garbage. And for those who don't know what this is, it's a zip level. I use it all the time. It uses a pressurized gas to, to uh, determine elevations. I find it useful. Old guys think it's a waste of money. I don't care, but check it out. I'm going to show you how I use this. You could use a measuring tape, a series of string lines, lasers, whatever you want. I'm going to use this today, and this is how I'm going to establish my elevations. I want to catch my zero right on the lip, because that's where I want my deck to end, flush with this lip here. Okay, so that's our zero. Now we know our total drop will be at this point, right in the center of the roof. We have 5.6 inches. And when we go over here to this point, we have 6.2 inches. So we already know that there's an elevation change going from the center to here. Now, we go to the other side. We have 6.5. So that's the changes that we're dealing with. And this is why we use this machine. So now I know that I'm 5'6", 6'2", and 6'5", and we're going to cut our V to match that, place our rim right here, minus the thickness of the flooring, of course, the decking in this case. But I just call it the flooring in case it doesn't matter what kind of carpet you are. We all know that we have to calculate the thickness of whatever we're using to walk on. I'll call it the flooring. You're going to have to get over that. Set your cursor up to your line and follow. Here's where we're at the center point. We're going to have to start making a turn the other way. So you have to make sure you adjust your blade and you keep an eye on your cursor so you know where your blade is going to be in five seconds from where you're cutting. Wasn't that easy? 
you got to remember which side's which. I recommend marking and uh, writing your measurements down. So, this in place. Here's a piece that'll be the thickness of our flooring that we're going to use the deck, EPA decking. We still have that little lip. So that's the amount that we have to shim it up in order to not only give adequate drainage, but to just make it perfect because the roof is not going to be an exact science itself. See, that's important. I think one of the most important things we have to realize is even if the builder or the guy who did the roof or the guy who did the doors didn't do their work perfectly, we need to make sure that our deck looks perfect, even if it can't be perfect, because now we're in a position where this door is not exactly level. Um, so what we do want is our decking to be flush with the threshold the whole way down. So if that means that our deck is not perfectly level, but still looks it, that's what we're going to have to do to compromise and make sure that our work looks pristine no matter what. And we're giving the homeowner what they want. We're not just building it saying our work was square, our work was level, we're gone, and then it doesn't fit the build because that'd be inconsiderate, not only to the other builders, but it'd be inconsiderate to the client who's paying you to do this. Let's see if our math worked out. Look at that. That's what we're looking for. We'll leave a little bit of a gap for water to drain, but we still want that transition to be flush. Earlier, we cut our rim joist to cut the V out of it to match the slope of the roof, and then each individual joist has its own size based on the, the height of the rim joist at that spot, and we did it that way so it would be as simple as putting our half-inch PVC fascia pieces in to hold to keep the deck up for drainage, and then any micro-adjustments when leveling, we'll use these composite shims.